Welcome back to Inside Politics. Our guest today, longtime criminal court clerk Howard Gentry, and also Walter Overton, the former uh, executive director of the Metro Sports Authority, general manager at Nissan Stadium. Both are here in their capacities as being trailblazers in terms of desegregating some important uh, places in Nashville back in the 1960s. Uh, Walter, I want to talk to you a little bit mm -hmm. about you are also a great football player in high school, at Pearl High School. You. Uh, you, you probably had were recruited. You were an all-state quarterback at mm -hmm. that time. Uh, you mm -hmm. were recruited by colleges, but only as a wide receiver. Mm -hmm. Was that yeah. code for, for racists? They didn't have black quarterbacks in those days. They didn't think they could play quarterback. No. Um, when I went to school at, at, at Vanderbilt, and that was a school, the one Southeastern Conference school, that said that uh, Coach Pace said that you can come in and, and let's fight for being a quarterback. At that time, the only... Well, the only teams you could play on was freshman teams, okay? So, As a freshman, yeah. Yeah, sure. so uh, my freshman year, we won three games and lost two, okay? So when spring practice came about, uh, for four or five days, I was a quarterback, and then Coach Pace called me in and asked if I would sacrifice. Uh, and, you know, you, you could go back and play quarterback, but I want you to be a wingback so you can get the ball. So I, I went back and told him that uh, if I'm a, if I'm gonna be a quarterback, I want the ball in my hands all the time so I can make things happen. He said, "Oh, yeah, you will. We'll, we'll, we'll design plays for you to for you to have the ball." Well, you did become an All SEC receiver, yeah, yeah. but but yeah, did it hurt you? Did you did you think oh, about I leaving left. Vanderbilt at that time? I left. I left. Yeah, because I said, I'm not gonna do this. I'm, I'm not. You told me that I could play quarterback. Watson Brown was a quarterback at that time. I could. You know, spend a year on the on the on the bench. Oh, what changed your mind to well, come back? My mom. She said, "You got to go back." Now, now, Walter, I mean, Howard, you played with uh, with, uh, with with uh, Walter in in high school. Yes. You, you was a lineman. Yeah. He was always telling you to get out of the way because he, he could run faster than you. He you could. Were out there blocking he, could. he could run faster than everybody on the team, though. So <laughs> I didn't feel so bad, but I did play yeah. with him, and and. Um, and he wasn't even good. He was great. I mean, I, I've not seen very many uh, uh, athletes that could play that position like he did. Howard, you attended and graduated from Tennessee State University. You're a legend there, much as your father was. You were a longtime play-by-play -play broadcaster there and athletic director. You remained a trailblazer in local politics. You were the first African-American elected countywide to three different posts. Uh, you were among the first Metro Councilman at large. At the time, nobody thought African-Americans could be elected. They hadn't been elected for a long time before you came on board. Then you were elected Vice Mayor, first African-American, and finally the first African-American to be elected criminal court clerk, maybe to any of the constitutional offices in Nashville. Mm. Um, was politics in your mind when you were growing up? Nope. It was, <laughs> it was not in my mind. I wanted to be, I wanted to play professional football. I wanted to be a head football coach like my dad. And I wanted to be athletics director at Tennessee State. Uh, I got hurt playing football after my first year. I did get the letter my first year. But uh, my career ended with ACL. And, and um, that didn't happen. And that was my dream. It was just it. And so uh, life brought me into politics. I was always interested because I had parents, especially my mother, who was interested in politics. But no, I, I never dreamed of doing it. Uh, but uh, other people felt that that's where I could serve at the high, greatest level. And, and it happened. It just, uh, it just evolved. Walter, you went into sports administration, more or less. You became mm -hmm. first exe executive director of the mm -hmm. Sports Authority mm -hmm. and also working over at, as a director over at yeah. Nissan Stadium. Mm -hmm. Do you find that things have improved in terms of African-American opportunities oh, yes. in that area than yes. what it was maybe when you started? Yes, yes. The, they've improved expensively and, and so that other officers can come in and do what, uh, what, I, what I did. I, I was blessed with having an administrative uh, uh, assistant, and she was just wonderful. I could do things and get things done and, didn't, and would not have any problems at it. At, at this particular time, she is the executive uh, authority for the sports authority. So that's, what, that's how she got in it, and she's been there for a long time now. Howard, you ran twice for mayor. You came within 300 votes, I think, in one of the cases to making it into the runoff for the final two. Uh, Nashville has many African-American elected officials now countywide, which was not true some years ago, but no mayor. Why not? Is it 
do you think sometime soon we're going to see an African-American candidate emerge oh, that can be elected mayor? I absolutely believe that that is going to happen. And uh, Nashville, at, at the beginning, uh, I don't think that Nashville was ready. Um, it was a getting ready, you know, but uh, uh, not that, that anything bad happened, but when you, you know, uh, the steps that I had, Councilman at large, uh, Vice Mayor, every every rung that I, I that I stepped up to uh, became more challenging as it related to me being an African American. But uh, the fact is, we're we're gonna it, it's going to happen. I'm not even worried about that. To both of you, as you look back across your lifetime, what do you see as been your role and what has been your legacy to Nashville for what you were able to do? to provide more equal opportunities for African Americans and others in Nashville. Yeah, uh, I have, with the positions that I've had, I've wanted to hire uh, minority people to uh, be around me uh, so that they would think about hiring people to be around them if I'm gone. So uh, that was one of my main uh, situations is, is to make sure that somebody would come behind me. Howard? I think uh, my major role is to have uh, the have had the opportunity and have the opportunity to open the eyes up to to the entire uh, community that uh, African Americans are capable. Mm -hmm. They are smart. We are we are we are ready, and um, there, there's just no reason in the world for there to be any kind of barrier or restriction of uh, anyone to be able to move into the offices they're in. One last question, quick response is, while much has been accomplished during your time, because in, in part because of your leadership, what remains to be done in the area of equal rights and opportunities for everyone? Yes, sir. Well, yeah. well, what remains to be done is that uh, we've got to uh, be less divisive mm -hmm. and, and we're becoming more divisive. So it seems like we're starting over again. Mm -hmm. it, it really, uh, the challenge is, is still before us. And uh, the only way that we are going to uh, be as great as we should be as a city or a nation is to stop uh, allowing anything to divide us. And right now we are divided. Walter, mm -hmm. you're optimistic about that briefly. Yes, ma'am. That's a... It's, it's, it's a tough cause, but it should be done. There's gentlemen, no reason why. Gentlemen, it thank be you done. so much for being with us today. It's been fun, my old friends, to thank see you. you both. And it all started on the Not Whole Baseball field. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you for joining us on Inside Politics. Hope you'll be back here again for a future show. If you can't get enough politics in the meantime, you go to the Channel 4 website. You'll find my capital commentary there. There's a commentary posted every Friday afternoon. Enjoy the rest of your weekend, and we'll see you here next time. Goodbye.